Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so, uh, I promised someone that I would do a, a little something on Gaunt's, even though it's sort of like uh, out of out of the way. I'm gonna do everything, as you can tell by my uh, Tyrant and Armies movies. I'm gonna do everything in the context of armies and go down the lists of the units in those armies. Um, but uh, I got the request, so I thought, you know, might as well uh, show throw something up there, at least the general uh, can idea on about, uh, it's all about Gaunts, just the Gaunt Broods, not Hormigaunts, just Gaunts. Um, and uh, so I guess uh, let's get started. Um, first of all, Gaunts are pretty much your uh, your swarming meat shield. Um, they have other uses in uh, different types of armies, but uh, for the most part and the majority of armies, they're essentially there to um, die and then depending on the level of your preference for them to be tactically flexible you uh, you equip them a little bit differently but pretty much they're uh, there to soak up enemy firepower you know soak up the models in close combat so your heavy hidden units can be like in other armies where they have a commander the hidden power fist in our armies it's like having gene stealers there or a brood lord or you know other models with higher initiative um, to be the hidden power fist sort of deal um, like ravengers you know we keep them out of base to base so they don't die so they can't be singled out but in using the uh... the swarm the broods the gaunt broods to help out the army so um... let's go out um... basically for the gaunts there's a there's a couple configurations. The uh, the most popular are three types: um, the spine fist, which is just a gaunt, and you give them a spine fist. That's it. For five points, that is the cheapest unit you're gonna find in the Tyranid army. And uh, boom, right there, you can you can mass a lot of models down, and uh, just expect them to die. And if you actually get a round of shooting in with them, um, that's great. But for the most part, you just run them up and you hold up the enemy till your other things can take them out so um... that's pretty much what the uh, spine fists do um, the only problem that people have with the, the spine fist models is that uh... the strength of the weapon is toughness uh... three so it's it's going to be impervious to like a lot of there are a lot of models in the game that uh... can claim immunity um, you know such as another tyranid army with uh you know, Carnifex with toughness seven. You know, if he bought the extra, you know, extra toughness, um, so that can be sort of annoying. But um, or like, if you want to hit tanks on their back armor, the toughness three is not going to do it for you. So a lot of people, um, for that reason, pay the extra point on top of the, the spine fist for the two points and get a six point termagon, which is you know where the gaunts basically you know in 40k came from they were all termagants in the beginning and then they they gave them a couple other things which uh, weren't for spine fists by the way they were spike rifles and uh, strangle webs which uh, would be awesome if they actually brought them back because I think that would be like av absolutely devastating to any other army if they gave uh, termagants flamer templates or uh, you know a, a AP4 weapon or something like that you know a, a high AB weapon the long range that would be devastating to armies that would make shooting nids ridiculous i think but um... so the termagons have a lot more flex tactical flexibility because they can they can do things at you know at very you know low opportunity you know very low chance of them actually performing tasks like popping the rear armor um... but with a flesh bore it's very common because you know it's not it's not a reroll. It's a reroll to wound, and like you can, you know, get those other toughness enemies, and uh, you know, it acts a little, ta packs a little punch that reroll the wound for uh, termagants, especially depending on what you're trying to hit in wound. Um, it comes very in handy, so people swear by that. Even though, uh, remember, the gaunts are there to run up, hold up the enemy while you, you do some damage and uh, while other units do damage in close combat pretty much for Tyranid army. Um, the third most popular is the uh, Devourer Gaunts or Devil Gaunts as everyone calls them. Uh, and those are equipped with Toxin Sacks and Devourers. Um, 
The main advantage of this is that you get a strength 3 range 18. A, um, you know, two shots to go at him with reroll to, uh, reroll to wounds. Which, in a shooting nid list, is essential because it can, people swear by him because they, pretty much you surprise the enemy because you go up there, you, uh, all of a sudden you have a brood of maybe like 16 miles, you're dropping, you know, 32 shots at strength 3 with reroll to wounds. You know, you're going to drop a couple models, depending on what it is. And uh, that's that's uh, that's pretty devastating. But they're, uh, they're pretty costly because, you know, now you have um, essentially a 10-point gaunt. So you have to remember you, you get the feedback of when that, that gaunt dies, that's 10 points. So um, they're an expensive unit for gaunts especially, especially so you can get twice as many with uh, spine fists, um, but uh, they pack a real punch if you really want, if you want more of like an elitist type, or uh, if you're going for like a fluffy advanced, you know, nids, where, uh, you know, they're like, you know, they've evolved more, you know, that could be a great thing. Um, then uh, pretty much uh, going down the, uh, the biomorphs, Adrenal glands, um, not worth a point. Um, I really don't think they're they're worth a point to give them an initiative five, even against high initiative armies, um, just because they're gonna die anyway. And uh, you know, pretty much you're gonna use the other models in your army that have a higher initiative to do the real punch and uh, everything. Um, the adrenal glands for upgraded weapon skill, you know, not worth it again. Um, you know, for a point. The extended carapace, uh, absolutely worthless because, uh, you know, you're giving a 5 plus save, um, it doesn't do anything because all the shooting bolters are, you know, AP5, so they're going to drop no matter, no armor save. And then in close combat, you know, you're going to fail enough saves to uh, have to remove all the models anyway. So, um, there's no point in that. Flesh hooks, again, no point. Um, you have so many models. Uh, it's not going to matter if you attack at initiative because you have, you know, you're just attacking initiative four anyway. So, um, and you don't really have a big kick in close combat with Gaunts. And, uh, Scuttlers, uh, or Scuttlers, or whatever you want to call it, um, they, uh, it's interesting. You can, you can use this and equip it to your models, but I would only do so, only, 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 if you're doing a game where you know it's objective based and you really need to get there sooner okay and you really feel you can justify the points otherwise don't give it to them and uh... Um, toxin sacks um, i wouldn't give it to anything but the uh... devour gaunts but uh... there's an interesting like elitist list floating around uh... using gaunts with uh... strength five uh... flesh borers um, that's interesting, but, uh, again, that's, that's expensive, because now you got nine point, uh, termagants, and, uh, you know, with only a 12 inch range, but, uh, it's interesting to see them used against, like, armies that are, like, very low in model count, such as a demon hunter's army, or maybe a, a, a plague marine's army, or Nurgle, you know, uh, a death guard army, sorry, and, uh, it's interesting to see how you can, like, basically counteract a high toughness army, and, uh, with uh with tier nets, which is 